Victorian object lesson book. We haven't got an exact date for it, but we reckon probably around the 1880s. So what you can see is there are four different trays like this one. Uh, each one has lots of little single objects or groups of objects. So some of these, if you look at, pick that out very carefully. But so this, you can see lots of different kinds of paper. So the idea would be you compare the different kinds of paper, or there's single objects. So this one here. Very very carefully. This is a cocoon of a silkworm, and then alongside it, you've got lots of different examples of uh, manufactured silk. Um, so the idea of these. So some, so within this box, what you've got, um, they're sort of vaguely arranged in terms of types. There are a lot of these to do with textiles. There's another one that's to do with um, geological samples. There's another one that's got lots of little bottles, uh, mainly of food stuff. In each layer, you've got uh, the familiar alongside unfamiliar, you've got man-made alongside uh, naturally occurring. So on one layer we've got granite alongside uh, a man-made metal hinge. On another layer we've got familiar beeswax alongside unfamiliar gutta percha. Gutta percha was uh, used in industry, it was used to insulate uh, telegraph wires. And the idea of an object lesson is that you take a single object put it in the child's hand and encourage them to really, really, really look at that object. So it's encouraging observational skills, but it's also uh, starting a conversation. So the idea is that you would look at, you'd ask them what it looks like, what it feels like, what it smells like. You get, and from there you start to lead into more complex questions, you start to introduce more technical vocabulary, you start to look at well, where might it have, was it, is it natural, is it man-made, where might it have come from, and so you start to look at uh, possibly trade routes, possibly natural history, possibly industrial processes, there's lots of different different ways that, that that single object can take you, so the idea is that from a single pebble you can learn the whole history of geology. In the 19th century you've got a lot of, um, we well, got object lesson books. Uh, so teaching teachers how to go through this sort of conversational process, how you would use the object. The idea was that you could do it with anything, so you didn't need a set like this. You could do it pebble in the street, uh, grain of rice in the kitchen, you could do it anything. The idea was, in fact, that from doing these kind of lessons, the children would then take more notice of the world around them. And so there's, and there's some people took a religious take on that, that you would understand God's world better. Uh, but it didn't have to be, it, you know, other people would take a more scientific approach and that it made you sort of look more, look more at the world around you and sort of observe better. But an object lesson box like this meant that you had a bit more structure to those lessons, so you weren't just relying on what happened to be in your kitchen or, you know, what you happened to see on your, on your nature walk. Um, the idea was that this is sort of much more structured and so you can see, and so you do have some little comparative sets, so lots of um, different kinds of, different kinds of carpets. Um, or particular bugs next to each other. Um, so, it to, so that would kind of give you a bit more structure and you could make, make sure that you were covering a wide range of, of, of subjects. One thing that isn't clear from this box is how exactly it was used. So object lessons, you'd get object lessons in classrooms, so maybe for 100 children you'd get object lessons in Sunday school lessons, but also in the home with governesses. So governesses is obviously very straightforward. It's a one-to-one -one or one-to-small group conversation. You can see how that would work. What I'm less clear about is how this box might be used in a school. Um, we think it probably was used in a school because it came from the History of Education collection, uh, where most of, most of the collection comes from schools and school teachers. But we don't know exactly how it was used.